Ah, the streets of London. British culture at its finest. Bulldogs. What's up, big dude? <laughs> Tea. I tell you what, though, folks, that's bloody nice. That is not English. The English monarchy. <laughs> And getting shanked in a dark alley. It cannot get any more British than this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my humble small little channel where I review video games. I'm a little bit late. I'm a little bit of a lazy bastard, unfortunately. But today we're going to review one of the most ambitious video game mods of all time called Tifa High Poly 4K model. I I mean Fallout London. Fallout London is made by a very small modding team and they have a lot of love for this project and it really showed in the final product. But is it any good though? Yes mate, you have come to the right pub. Let's talk all about Fallout London for today's video because this team has really made something special here. Now I know what you're thinking. Max, this just looks like Fallout 4. Yeah, little Timmy, you are correct. This is in fact just like Fallout 4 because it is made on Fallout 4's version of Creation Engine. Surprise, surprise, it actually looks like Fallout 4, but it also looks better than the vanilla version of Fallout 4. Every texture you see around you is all customly made for this mod, just like the animations, the voice acting, as well as the soundtrack. And it's all unique and very high quality. The devs can be very proud on what they made here. I was just bamboozled when I saw all the detail around me in this world. And it was such a high quality, just the same as a actual new Fallout game. But I just forgot that I was playing a mod at a lot of times throughout my playthrough. I just forgot about it. The game also was very atmospheric at a lot of times and that is also because of the lighting that they have in this mod and the weather systems that they have built in that gives this very atmospheric feeling and they have this indoors as well as outdoors how the lighting would bounce off objects stuff like that all handcrafted and it helps a lot to make a great scene. Uh, just as I was almost playing a triple A Fallout game. Hey, are you still, are you still watching? I know attention spans these days are very low. So just for you guys, I will put like a DVD hitting box thing somewhere here on the screen for you guys. So that you just have some more stimuli visually. <laughs> One thing I really want to praise Fallout London for is its voice acting. If you are familiar with the modding scene in Skyrim especially and also Fallout 4, voice acting might be a bit dicey depending on which project of course but when it comes to fallout london their voice acting is in my opinion very solid and very professional look i have played other triple a games in my life before that have had much worse voice acting than what fallout london does john lockheed's gone entirely missing but separately, there are reports of a horrible scene in a Millwall flat. Someone torn to absolute pieces. Body in no way identifiable. Let's talk of maybe some crazed chemed doing it. Winston, what the fuck have you done? You sick little shit. Hello there. This is, uh, entering Tommy Soldier personality. Greetings, Wayfarer. I have some orders for you. High Command tasked me with tracking you down. HQ requires your assistance in locating a missing team of Tommies. 
They were dispatched to investigate a distress call emanating from an old Tower Hamlets Pindar station. Unfortunately, I do not have any more information on the matter, I'm afraid. Mum's the word and all that. What? That really pisses me off. Oh no! What do we do? I'm so scared! The soundtrack is also a pretty good highlight. There are radio stations as well in Fallout London. Three new ones to be exact and they all have also new music that they made especially for this mod. And it all fits very well in my opinion in the theming and the setting. If you want to take a listen to the music I would highly advise to go to their YouTube channel but I will also try to have some music here in the video if it's of course not copyrighted but yeah i also really like the soundtrack now when it comes to the presentation i don't really have a lot of bad stuff to say at all except for one thing the technical issues with this mod holy smokes it is cyberpunk 2.0 Brother, uh. Now, we all know how much of a technical mess right now Fallout 4 is on PC. For all the crashes that I had and the technical issues and the bugs, I don't know if these are part of Fallout London itself or Fallout 4. I have no idea. You tell me. Fallout 4 is literally holed together with duct tape. <laughs> It is absolutely embarrassing. And it's even more embarrassing that your next gen game, Starfield, runs better on my system than a 10 year old game. That is literally what happened with me. I played Starfield, I reviewed that for Ace Eyes, and it was technically even not bad at all. Fallout 4 though, with its next gen patch, they broke it again. For, for, somehow, I don't know how. Of course, the Fallout London team was like, let's just release it for last gen because they wanted to do a release for next gen, but they literally couldn't solve the issues that Bethesda made themselves in the next gen version. Thank you, Bethesda, for that. I really love you, Todd. I really do. Guys, I had over 24 crashes i'm going to repeat this 24 in my 40 hour playthrough if you can do math that is almost a crash every hour to two hours basically that's even with famous mods installed like buff out 4 that still wasn't enough to stop the crashes for me. Then I also had some quest progression bugs, which are also a nightmare. Some quests would not progress for me that were also part of the main storyline. Though Fallout London's team did say they would make much more patches to fix a lot of stuff, so that's good. But just be aware that these type of bugs are a thing. It's not just visual bugs, I had quest progression bugs, textures not loading in properly, and also extremely long loading times, as well as a crash almost every two hours. It was pretty rough, I can tell you. So if you want to play Fallout London yourself, I do highly recommend that you just wait for a bit. It's not going anywhere, and I am still going to be very positive about this mod in general in the rest of the review, but if you want to avoid all the technical issues, stuff like that, just wait until there are more patches out. The game is absolutely worth it. It's a great game. It's also very ambitious, but it has just so many bugs. Just wait a bit until a better version has been released and then play it. So the gameplay in Fallout London is just like Fallout 4. End of the video. No, 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 I'm joking. But, of course, it's going to be very similar because it's literally on the same engine. If you didn't like Fallout 4 at all, then Fallout London won't win you over magically by any means. So if you don't like Fallout 4, you won't really like Fallout London either. 
but I was very surprised on how melee focused Fallout London is over Fallout 4. Basically in the beginning of the game they give you a knife to shank people with and if you are very lucky you find a gun and that's it for a very long time in the beginning few hours of the game. Ammunition in this game is very scarce. Basically the point of the beginning parts of Fallout London is that you really need to feel like you are in a post-apocalyptic setting with not a lot of stuff around you and so you will have to fight a lot with your knife but you really use that ammo for your gun in very sparse moments when you really need it in the most difficult situations otherwise you will use your melee weapon one thing i really want to praise the fallout london team for is actually having choice and consequence in the story and in the gameplay because one thing that we all complained about with fallout 4 vanilla was the fact that everything was basically you agree you don't agree you are neutral or the sarcastic option and in fallout london this is not the case at all there are many skill checks that you can have with intelligence your perception your charisma you all know that stuff or strength if you have a very strong character all that stuff is back from all the fallout games like 3 and new vegas so if you really missed that especially in fallout 4 it is here in fallout london a lot of quests that I did in Fallout London were very good and creative and this is exactly why I play Elder Scrolls games and Fallout games because it makes you want to live in that world. It's not just a video game, it is a world where you role play in. It's not just a level, it's a city where you come in, right? And it's dynamic and Fallout London is just that. When you are exploring everywhere, you might see someone that needs your help with a quest. So I was playing Fallout London the other day and I stumbled upon a farmer with a problem that someone was stealing his food and I had to basically find out in his family who stole the food basically. And then a minute walking from that farm, there was a bandit camp with a special item there. And then two minutes to the west, I saw a very cool empty store with its own secrets, stuff like that. And then I found this Cthulhu doll and that brought me to this secret quest line. And that's what I love about Bethesda games, that freedom of exploration and the dynamicness of it you know everywhere where i walk something will happen and in fallout london they really replicate as well from the traditional bethesda experience that you know there was always one thing that i also found very disappointing with fallout 4 in particular and that is the lack of explorable towns or settlements Sure, you have Diamond City or whatever. Like, Diamond City is a cool town and I liked it, but that's really it. Sure, you have Good Neighbor in Fallout 4, but Good Neighbor? Like, really? <laughs> if you compare it to Skyrim, it was so disappointing. In Skyrim, you have all the halts and that is next to the small towns. So I was always kind of disappointed with the lack of settlements in Fallout 4. And here comes Fallout London with, I present you ladies and gentlemen, Westminster. Westminster is absolutely huge. And to be fair, not all the buildings are enterable in Westminster, but still though, compared to Diamond City, it blows Diamond City out of the water. I'm sorry. And still, there are side quests in Westminster alone that I missed, that I still was able to do. The amount of content in this mod is 
crazy. And Westminster is not the only town in this game. There are more. Well, not at the size, of course, of Westminster, but still though. Fallout London was really cooking right here. <laughs> yeah, boy. I know I am quite now stomping on the grave of Fallout 4 at the moment, but one more thing I absolutely was not a fan of in Fallout 4 was the rarity system. Basically, just like in Borderlands or any looter shooter game, you have like the normal pistol and the medium pistol and the extra fat large pistol from McDonald's and <laughs> the legendary pistol, right? What I want to see though in these games from Bethesda are unique items with its own backstory, with a quest attached to them. That's what Bethesda did very well, especially in games like Skyrim. But for some weird reason, they needed to introduce this whole rarity system in Fallout 4 and it's also in Starfield. Luckily though, Fallout London has unique items, new items, all new weapons that are also fitting in the British setting, shall I say. Also new armor sets that look amazingly cool. You've probably seen that armor set from the Royal Knights, the Queen, shall I say. I don't know how it's called, but that armor set looks very cool as well. That's what I want and with, shall I say, a story to them or maybe a quest to them. And Fallout London still has that kind of uh, special version, shall I say, of a normal weapon with a effect on it. I had a shotgun that actually had like uh, explosion damage, stuff like that. That's still in the game, but they don't sacrifice that uniqueness that I want to see in these games. That is a thing Fallout London does very well. As much as I like the gameplay in Fallout London, unfortunately there are also some negatives that I do have to talk about in this review. I love the fact that there is so much content in this mod, but there are also a lot of filler quests as well. So basically the main big map is also split into other mini maps with their own regions. Basically think of something like Nuka World and also Far Harbor in Fallout 4 with their own basically small open world map but then a few of them shall I say. And because of that there are also many more loading screens and you can have a lot of quests where you constantly have to fast travel from one area to another region to the main region to the main map and then back to another region and you'll see that a lot of these loading screens will stack up each other and that will get very annoying very fast i don't know why they had to have so many provinces regions or walled off of the main map but hey I'm not one of their developers but I don't know if that was such a good decision so basically every region has a leader faction shall I say that is the boss in that region and to be friends with that faction you will have to do a whole quest chain now normally it's not a big problem to do quest chains at all I like them, especially in factions, but for some weird reason they made all the very first quests for these regions just like fetch quests. And when I say fetch quests, I mean fetch quests. Go to region A, get item B, go to person X and do this and return to me. That got very tiresome if you had to do multiple of these regions with their own quest chain. So at some point I was a bit tired of that design and that is unfortunate because there are some very good quests behind those quest lines shall I say when you do them later. It basically builds up of course towards better quests but you see the problem here right? You always start with a very shitty basically fetch quest and you basically repeat that cycle for every faction and for every region. Another thing that really annoyed me was the shortcut wheel. 
it was so clunky. And especially if you play with a controller, which I did. I think he, they expected you to play with a mouse and keyboard, but I like to play my games with a controller. And this was just clunky as hell. I don't know who came up with this weapon wheel in the Fallout London team, but please, we had a fine shortcut system in fallout 4 i don't know why the hell they felt the need to have a weapon wheel it would work better if the time would slow down while in combat but in fallout 4 time doesn't slow down when you are in the shortcut menu so it was just very clunky now some stuff is very balanced in this mod but some other stuff isn't and this is really where game experience comes into play. These modders are just, I'm sorry that I'm saying this, amateurs. But very talentful amateurs by that. But there are some fine tuning stuff that game developers actually know just from experience. And I do miss some stuff here when it comes towards balancing issues. And I do think it's mainly a thing of getting the mod out as fast as possible for these guys but because of that i do think they missed a bit more balancing work i do hope they learn a bit from the feedback here that i'm giving i might be a bit harsh here but it's just to help the devs out and i do hope they take these ideas to the drawing board so one of the strongest aspects of fallout london is definitely its storytelling you are basically the Wayfinder, that's at least what they call you in the game. And you find yourself trapped in a laboratory and there's this very mysterious guy, Mr. Smite is his name. And he basically lets you go out of the laboratory and you don't really know why. The goal of the game is basically to find out who is the identity of Mr. Smite and what is your identity because you don't know that you have kind of amnesia just like a lot of other rpg games and they use this pretty well as a trope here in this game as well it's not anything revolutionary by any means but it's well executed in my opinion i really like what they do with the lore here because it's very in-depth they basically had to think of a lot of new stuff that they had to write into existence of course because there is nothing really known about the war outside of the United States. So what happens really in Europe when the bombs fell. And they did a very good job with that in my opinion. And it does match very well with the already existing lore in America. And there is also a lot of callbacks towards the American Fallout as well that you will see in the mod. I also saw a lot of inspiration from Bioshock. That was actually a pretty cool surprise thematic wise also. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, but when it comes to the atmosphere, stuff like that with interior design and lighting, it did remind me a lot of the Bioshock franchise. I also really enjoyed the companions in this mod. They were all very well written as well. They had their own backstory with their own quests, side quests. They are, were pretty diverse as well. You get a robot companion when you go to one of the factions or there is a dog companion. Just like dog meat in Fallout 4. His name is Churchill. I don't want to spoil everything. But there are pretty well written companions in this mod as well. And they are just as good as mainline Fallout releases. The factions are also very well done in this mod from a thematic standpoint as well. And some of them are only joinable in the main storyline. But some of them are also secret in the world. If you go explore, you can maybe find out about these factions and most of them also have a pretty good story my most favorite one was definitely the vagabonds because they really resemble the peaky blinders and that is one of my most favorite british tv shows so i was going to like probably the vagabonds anyway but they also have a pretty good story attached to them as well one of my most favorite characters in this game is definitely sebastian gaunt this guy 
has no filter at all and he will curse at the player 15 million times in different phrases and colors at you. I laughed my ass off with this guy, really. Damn it. This fairy tale shit is not what I fucking wanted. Unbe fucking leaveable. Some butcher you've turned out to be. Fuck is wrong with you, Wayfarer. Are you terminally insubordinate? I tell you to kill Lockheed, and you let this sick pile of shit over here slice him into fucking human stew. I tell you to kill Sinclair and make it obvious, and you instead listen to Anthony's stupid sob story about burning the corpse. And Peter, you let that fucking snake live. Shit like that comes back to bite you. And you lot, you utter pack of clowns, egging on the new mug with your personal shite. Are you trying to sabotage the whole damned vagabond cause here? Are you ruining everything I'm trying to achieve? You're a disgrace, the lot of you. I should have you all on the fucking chopping block. So I do have one small disappointment though with mainly the three big main factions that you encounter in the end part of the story. I can't spoil them for you, but I expected a bit more of a gameplay benefit with being part of these three main factions like extra benefits extra side quests character development stuff like that i expected a little bit more of that i'm not going to lie but still though it was a pretty good result nonetheless these factions were kind of more of a thematic thing shall i say i wish there was a bit more to them but Still though, it's a free mod and maybe at this point I'm expecting a bit too much. But nonetheless, I really enjoyed my time with the story in Fallout London and the side quests and the factions and the companions. I was at first very skeptical if they could do a Fallout game in London, but they really proved me wrong here. This mod showed that you can do a Fallout game outside of America and it actually works. And it's also very interesting lore-wise what happened outside of America when the bombs dropped. And they do a very good job here explaining that in Fallout London. And I had a very good time exploring all of it. In a nutshell though, Fallout London is one of the most ambitious mods for a video game I have ever played. It's probably the only one also I've ever finished. So still though, Fallout London's exploration is just like something out of a Bethesda game. It's really akin to Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, that Bethesda style exploration that you really love. But it also blends Fallout New Vegas, their choice and consequences as well as they can in this mod. It's not as good as New Vegas, but I'm still very happy though that they tried and they did a very good job at it this is a must play for fallout fans now the question is is this mod better than fallout 4 and i would say in a lot of ways it is but not in everything i have to say when it comes to some gameplay stuff like balancing i do prefer fallout 4 a bit and maybe also with some of its Characters, I also prefer Fallout 4 a bit over London, but still though, most of the time, this mod is better than vanilla Fallout 4, which is a big achievement. Fallout London is not perfect. I had a lot of technical issues, but once these technical issues are fixed, this is one of the best fan mods out there, or just like, fan games out there this is a must play for fallout fans in particular i do highly advise that everyone at some point check this mod out because it is ambitious as hell it is really ambitious and the devs should be proud of it this is a fully fledged game i cannot say this enough and that is just baffling to me because they worked years upon years upon years in one engine 
in the creation engine to make this happen. And the bar has now been set much higher for fan games in general. And more of these are actually on the way. Fallout Cascadia and Fallout Miami in the Fallout universe or Fallout 1 Remake and 2 Remake is now being done as well by fans. But also in the Skyrim community, there is a Oblivion remake coming and a Morrowind remake in the Skyrim engine. And the bar has really been set high for these modding projects after Fallout London. This was a absolutely delightful experience to play. The future for Bethesda game projects is very bright right now. Bethesda should be very happy with all this stuff because there will be more copies sold now for fallout 4 and also for skyrim this will boost their sales just because of these fan projects Todd, if you see this go sit on your knees and thank the modding community because they are doing a lot for these decade old games this should also be a wake-up call for bethesda you guys are literally getting beaten by your own fans. Amateur mothers are literally making at some points a better game than you guys are doing. That is just crazy to me. In my opinion, Bethesda does really have to step it up right now with Elder Scrolls 6. I like Starfield myself. But it was very divisive and it wasn't really the traditional Bethesda style of exploration that a lot of people wanted. And there were also a lot of fans disappointed when it came to Fallout 4's conversations and RPG mechanics. And I have to say, Bethesda, if a modding team can do it, you can do it too. Put everything into Elder Scrolls 6. I also quickly want to thank the modding community but in particular the fallout london dev team you have made a absolutely amazing experience and you get a amazing thank you from me but also from the whole fallout community and fan base just the bethesda fan base in general thank you for making this mod i enjoyed my time with it and I did say some critical stuff here in this video. And the mod is not 100% perfect. But I hope you take that criticism to your heart. And go back to the drawing board and make even more stuff. More patches. Uh, to make Fallout London also better. But maybe also make a sequel if you want to do that. Thank you for making this stuff. I really enjoyed my time playing it. Thank you for watching, it was a long video to do. Uh, the game also took a long time to finish for me, uh, playing it, making this review, making the script, filming, editing, all that stuff. If you liked everything you saw here in this video, give me a like, or also just subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more uh, content like this, game reviews, news, stuff like that. That's what I usually do, and rumors. For the biggest single player games, I do that for every platform, for PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, you name it. Also, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I might feature your comment, like I said, in the next video. Thank you guys for watching as always. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm going to leave you guys with Todd Howard because... Don't want you guys to miss Todd Howard because I all know how much you guys love Todd Howard. I'm just going to, uh, I don't know where the fuck I need to put this, like, on here. Uh, yeah, that's better. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>